this is the all-inclusive video for buying a short-term rental that actually makes money in Joshua Tree. If I see a property that's that's a yellow flag to me. That property made $110,000 gross revenue. Airbnb has been pushing those categories of days on people because people want that experience. Joshua Tree Airbnb market is down by 50% in terms of gross revenues for all the Airbnbs. Now it's getting super saturated. People are selling, people are freaking out, but yet I'm still buying in the Joshua Tree area. But why? That's a good question. And it's not like I'm buying it two or three years ago. I'm talking about currently right now, I'm an escrow on two properties and I believe in the area. The big reason is because there's so much money in Joshua Tree to this day. And I know what works and what doesn't work. I actually own a property management company called Stays You Like. We have 35 listings in the area and six of them are my own. And I thought this video was gonna be super useful for you guys to really educate you on what works in the Joshua Tree area and what doesn't and why people are selling low cash flowing properties and why I'm buying all the high cash flowing properties and what I'm looking for. And so I think this is the all inclusive video for buying a short term rental that actually makes money in Joshua Tree. So all these houses are hitting the market really those houses are average. Those houses are really not what people come to Joshua Tree for. They're in residential areas. They don't have some of the exclusive things that I'm gonna mention in this video. And quite honestly, most of them are just mismanaged. So yes, the supply of Airbnbs in this market went up like crazy during COVID. There was a lot of demand. A lot of people were coming in and renting out a residential average property. You can stick it up online and it would rent. But that doesn't mean you can't make money in this market because there are 3 million people that are coming to Joshua Tree National Park in 2022. 2023 is probably gonna be just as much, if not more, and it hasn't slowed down since the pandemic it actually has leveled up at the same numbers as the pandemic that's because a lot of people are discovering joshua tree 70 percent of the people that come to joshua tree were californians from the big cities of san francisco san diego la orange county the whole shebang so there's a huge opportunity where people are sleeping on the area and you can get high cash flow in properties i'm going to explain really what works number one is going to be the remote feel of the property when I bought my first property on Cascade Road, I had to drive three miles on a dirt road to even see the property. It was a two bedroom shack that was maybe 800 square feet ish. And I thought that it wouldn't make any money, but we decided to buy it anyways, cause it was hard to get deals and we were kind of desperate. Turns out that was the best investment I made because that property made $110,000 gross revenue in the last year. And guess what? Guests aren't deterred by the dirt roads. They love them. If I see a property that's not on a dirt road, that's a yellow flag to me. Now, granted, the locals are sick of the dirt roads and they don't want to go on it. But when people visit the area, they love the secluded feel of being in the middle of nowhere, getting away from the city, not having to feel like you're crammed in residential areas. And that's the beauty of Joshua Tree. Palm Springs doesn't have that. A lot of the cities in California are overcrowded. Joshua Tree is not. Joshua Tree has a lot of landmass. It's not commercialized at all to the scope of Palm Springs or, the, or any of the other markets. And so people really are looking for that acreage. I would look for anything that's two or more acres, but there's exceptions to that. If there's a property that feels remote, even if it's still close to town, that still works. It's all about how you feel in the area and you feel the privacy, you feel the outdoors, you're experiencing the outside. That's the thing that people wanna go there for. A lot of times you can't even depict if it's gonna feel remote until you're there at the property and actually seeing it in person. So I highly advise seeing the property in person before you buy it. So what does that mean? Residential properties can't make money? Yes, they can, but they don't make as much as a remote property because that's what people are going there for. Now, number two is special considerations. So that's things like the views of the city, uh, the views of the night sky, the ability to be able to hike the land. Maybe there's boulders that people can climb and be around. Those things definitely give the property value. Usually new builds will do better as well than, you know, just a gut rehab or something that older feel just because new builds feel more modern and clean. 
Another thing that people really like is unique structures. Unique structures do really well on Airbnb in general. Airbnb has been pushing those categories of unique stays on people because people want that experience when they're going on Airbnb. Now, the third thing is to prioritize the outdoor experience versus the indoor experience. Too many times I see people that spend way too much money on the interior of the property. I actually have one listing where we don't put the bathroom as one of the photos just because there's so many other really good photos and it's just average. Nobody has asked about the bathroom. Nobody has complained about the bathroom. And the big selling point really is the outdoor space for that property. So if you're thinking about spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a bathroom, it's probably not worth it. It's probably a better idea to build amenities outside where people are going to be spending most of their time. Now, I'm not saying to neglect the inside. The inside has to look good. The furniture has to be solid. I still think design is one of the highest ROI of why people book a place because of the marketability of the area. Nobody wants to be in an ugly place, but at the same time, you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars renovating a bathroom or doing these small little tweaks that really don't matter as much. The money is better spent on outdoor amenities. Some of the outdoor amenities I would recommend hot tub without a doubt pool. It doesn't have to be a full pool in ground, even though those do a lot better. But even if you do a cowboy pool, that's great. Now, if you can build a deck around it and you can make a hangout space, sunbathing, all of those other factors just add to the spice of the property. And really just think about differentiating through other things like a sauna or maybe a net that people can lay down with and do stargazing or a small little stargazing dome on a deck. Whatever the thing that you can think of, those things definitely have an impact on the experience because that's what people are going out there for. At this point, you're probably thinking, wow, this guy told me 10 different times why people are going out there for remote properties. It's important. That's why I'm saying it. Number four, there's too many two to three bedroom properties in the area. There's not enough one bedroom properties and there's not enough four to five bedroom properties. The one bedroom properties I love. I think the one bedroom properties are some of the best easy guests, um, really low cleaning fees so you can get booked all the time. Doesn't take much to really plan a vacation so you get more last minute bookings versus a large group. So there's just a lot of benefits to stay booked probably 90 plus percent easily with a one bedroom because it's so much easier to plan for it. Now, I also really like the four to five bedroom range because then you can host way more people and it's not the awkward in the middle with the two to three bedroom. And there it just becomes more economical and cheaper to split it across 12 people versus split it across four or five. Now, I don't think all two to three bedrooms do bad. If you have some of the special amenities and considerations I mentioned before, you're totally fine. But I'm just telling you, don't sleep on the one bedrooms. The one bedrooms in the studios are awesome. And number five is going to be location. So many investors make the mistake of buying in 29 Palms residential area because it's so cheap and it's easy to afford. Now those properties could make money here and there, but the value doesn't hold as strong, at least now in 2023 down the line, they might make more money, but cities like 29 Palms, Morongo Valley and Landers tend to be less profitable and maybe long term might make more money. The value holds the best in Yucca Valley, Joshua Tree and Pioneer Town. Pioneer Town being, in my opinion, one of the best investments you can make for the long term ability of that area growing into a very well known music hub in the state of California. However, there are some gems in Morongo Valley 29 Palms unincorporated area outside of the city limits and landers. If you can get the right property, maybe with boulders or up against a hill with the views or things of that nature, you could definitely have some money making abilities there as well. So I mentioned a lot of different aspects of what works and what doesn't work in Joshua Tree. And it's not that you have to have all of those criteria that I mentioned above, but the more things you can do to differentiate, get the remote feel property and make it something that's special and unique, 
there's no reason that you shouldn't be making enough money to cover your mortgage and then some especially now because we're in 2023 and the rates are so high that's an amazing opportunity to snag a deal so that later you can always refinance into a lower rate and that's the exact reason why when people are stopping buying and there's less co competition on the market. I like to dive in when the water is not red. I can make deals happen $200,000 off, $300,000 off. I mean, I just negotiated a property from 1.4 million to 920,000. There's a lot of benefits to buy right now. And if you're still scared and you're still uncertain or you want a partner to help you buy a property, I'm a realtor as well. So I can definitely help you find a high cash flowing property in the area. Just message me. I actually have my information in the description below, but happy hunting. Definitely make some money in Josh Street and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like and follow for more. I'm sorry. Would you speak louder? So please drop that like button subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos about Airbnb investing and even Joshua Tree specific videos.